Good morning, it's Jimbo and Christy here from Crimbo's Chronicles, and we are in Austin, Minnesota. Birthplace of what? Spam. It uh, was born here in July, July 5th, 1937. There's a museum behind us. We're waiting for it to open. We're gonna go and check it out and learn all we can about Spam. <laughs> I've never even eaten Spam. Uh, you know, they make it out of pork shoulder and pork ham. And back in 1937, they didn't think pork shoulder was a good meat product. And so they peddled Spam to get rid of the pork shoulder. Nowadays, pork shoulder is a high quality meat. But uh, I think that's kind of crazy. You know what Spam stands for? Special specialty processed American meat. Ew. It's actually one of the greatest American business success stories as since 1937 they have sold 8 billion cans of Spam in 44 countries. So apparently there's foreign Spam. I don't wonder uh, what exactly is in those spams I wonder if it's the same thing so in our spam in America it's pork shoulder pork ham salt sugar uh, sodium nitrate something else water that's what it is <laughs> so I got about two more minutes before this opens and then we'll get in there and teach you some things Hormel Foods is who makes spam and this is Tom Hormel Born in 1930, Tom Hormel was an Austin native who called Florida home most of his adult life. All right, let's start this museum. Oh, we're gonna hit that gift shop afterwards, but I do believe this is the spams from different uh, flavors. Not, I was about to say countries, but we've got teriyaki spam. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, there's a little race car. Spam. Wow. Ooh, Spam on waffles? I mean, that I could get, but I've never eaten Spam. I'm gonna have to try it. <laughs> there are 780 cans of Spam moving throughout the museum on a conveyor belt all the way around it takes one can 18 minutes to travel the whole museum oh, funny. well here's a bunch of facts the golden gate bridge was born in 1937 the same year as spam people in the u.s consume 267,840 cans of Spam every day or 186 cans of Spam every minute or 97,761,600 cans of Spam every year. It's nuts. I just tried my first. just came out last week. It took a year to get it. Can I try the jalapeno too? Of course you can. Sweet. That's why I'm here. Mmm. <laughs> okay. Jalapeno, I like it. Jalapeno is my favorite. Mmm, yeah. that's really spicy. yummy. It's not very, it, it, it's got a bit of a kick, but nothing much. You got one in there, and one that's hot spice, it's called hot spicy, and they're not just a wolf in there, it's hot spicy. Oh, yeah? yeah. So anyway. Oh, wow, I wonder, we can we buy that kind when we get done here? Yeah. You, they got it. You're in the gift shop? Gift shop. They oh, got sweet. It. That's about the only place in the world you can get every single pipe they make. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good to it's, know. It's about the same price you pay at the store, so it's not like that. Okay. Anyway. Thank right. you. There's Jimbo posing with our spam. <laughs> so cute. What else do we have here? The flying pig. Oh, this must be like a... Um, restaurant spam a lot game oh 
Monty Python featured spam. Oh, that's funny. The British often refer to spam products as the meat that won the war. In thanks, they celebrate a spam appreciation week every, every year. That's funny. Japan representation of the spam. Oh my. Look at that. That doesn't look bad. I might try it. Oh, look at how cute. <laughs> they even have a spam commercial. That's funny. In Japan, the spammy character was introduced in 2010 with his Cook It As You Want It TV commercial. Wow. <laughs> Spam in the Philippines. Looks like American. Swipe. Oh. Hand swipe for audio. <laughs> oh, like many other countries, the Spam brand was introduced to the Philippines during World War II. South Korea. The Spam brand introduced to Korea by the U.S. Army during the Korean War. I can hear it sizzling. <laughs> Korea's spam products are the second largest in the world behind the United States. Wow. And China. Brand was introduced in 2009 products were manufactured for the first time in 2017. They look crazy. Huh. <laughs> What's with the peanut butter? There's the spam. Chinese consumers describe the taste of spam products as meaty, juicy satisfaction. The Great Wall of China is 92,933,068 spam cans long, a.k.a. 13,171 miles. <laughs> Latin America spam. Ooh. That looks yum. Ooh, on a quesadilla too? Ooh, on a tostada? I could get behind Latin America's spam. Pavo, when they've got a spam spread. Over 12 varieties of spam products were sold in over 20 countries between Mexico, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean. Panama consumes the most spam products in Latin America. The, <laughs> the U.S. Mexican border is 30,903,840 spam product cans long, or 1,989 miles. So Hawaii, and actually, serve spam in their McDonald's. I can't get this one's audio to play. But Hawaii consumes more spam products than any other state. Eight million cans a year. 
in 2015, Spam Portuguese sausage was created for Hawaii. The distance between the Western Hawaiian Islands and South Burlington, Maine is 87,785,280 Spam product cans long or 5,542 miles. No, no single product in U.S. history is better known for its heroics during wartime, its dependability during peacetime, and its popularity during mealtime than the Spam brand. After more than seven decades, the Spam family of products is still tasty, high-quality kitchen staple that the world has come to know. Okay, World War II. The Hormel Girls will be in this store. Post-war America was treated to the Hormel Girls, a traveling promotional sensation. The extravagant musical and sales troupe canvassed the country in their fleet of white Chevys, spreading the Hormel message via store appearances and popular network radio show. The troupe firmly established Geo a Hormel and Company as a national marketer. So this all went on during the war. Oh, is this how we lift the spam out of our boxes? <laughs> spam lends a hand as storm clouds of war rumbled. The U.S. sent supplies to countries that would become its allies. More than 100 million pounds of Spam luncheon meat was among Lend-Lease shipment, along with many other GOA, Hormel, and company products. The company doubled its production to meet the demand. Oh. Hey, you're just in time for another meal in Spamville. There's no mystery about what's on the menu tonight. Spam. Three years. I don't know how much more spam I can take. I mean, Jim, and he's the camp history buff. Jim says we've got it good. This is back in World War One. It was mostly a dry biscuit, or else nothing at all. So we're grateful to have spam. It's not steak, but it's good meat. Fills you up. Lord knows there's plenty of it. And I guess that's the problem. There's just too much of it. I used to eat Spam back home before the war, maybe once every week or two, but here it's every day, two or three times a day. It's in the camp chow, it's in the field rations. You can't avoid it. I even heard that Ike is getting tired of finding Spam in his nest tin. This past week, I've had Spam cubed with cream corn, Spam breaded with corn flakes, Spam baked with cabbage, Spam fried with flapjacks, how do they? Don't get me started on the eggs. <laughs> and last night, I, uh, uh, Spam smothered in beans and brown sauce. The cooks invented. I'll give them that. I guess we'll always be griping, but the Sarge is probably right. We're not here for the food. And I'd rather eat Spam than bugs. In the end, it doesn't matter so much what we eat as long as it helps us get back home again. Hey, I tell you what. I'll meet you over at the next tent. I'll introduce you to some of the other guys. And we can see what the cook's done with the Spam tonight. Little timeline. The original Spam brand can, can utilized a key opening system that was used for more than 50 years. Kind of like the sardines, I believe. Key. Oh, like that. Oh, they would open it in the middle. Oh, so strange. Inspired by south of the border food, Hormel Foods created chili con carne in a can, surprising the company when it quickly gained nas nationwide acceptance. <laughs> this is the history of Hormel. See, I'm getting too old to run this company. It's time for you to take over as president. I never thought you'd really retire. The packing plant is your life. What do you do with yourself if you if you don't come to the office every day? Well, this is the handoff. Think, son. If I'm going to retire, I have to move away from the plant and Austin. I realize that. So your mother and I are moving to California. Mm. We're going to build a house in Bel Air. We've always liked California, and we all knew this day had to come. This but is the day that George hands over the, the 
Hormel company to J Hormel. Well, there's those cans moving along. So what's this room? We can learn how it's made. Just like I told you, salt, water, potato starch, pork with ham, sugar, and sodium nitrate. Quicker, quicker, quicker. We've got to serve the public. Oh, you got a bum machine. <laughs> Life is like a can of spam. You never know what you can make from it. <laughs> this here is the Sir Canalot character. He's cute. Him and his steed, a fire-breathing iguana, were introduced in 2012 to help celebrate Spam Brand's 75th anniversary. He's a tiny knight who stands three inches tall, the size of an egg, and embodies the Spam Brand's common place in pop culture. Ooh, would you try it? Spam's figgy pudding? <laughs> Spam canstruments. <laughs> Spam canstruments were commissioned for the 2015 Sp American tour to bring eats, beets, and crafty treats to all across America. <laughs> this here is the world's first bacon fueled motorcycle, model 2011 Track T 800 CDI. <laughs> Fun with Spam. Spam catapult. See it? This is a scientific instrument created to assist in studying the aerodynamic principles of Spam meat products. There is nothing quite so majestic as a cube of Spam. Spam. Classic arching through the skies on its way knocking down a pyramid of empty Spam brand cans. This Spamapult was built and donated by Arizona Camp Sunrise Sidekicks. It's funny. There's those cans again. See, this is where they came out and this is where they go back in. So it took them 18 minutes to go all the way through the museum. And these are all the Hormel products, the products that Hormel makes. And now the gift shop. Yay! Huh. Spam pants. Hello, how are you guys today? Good, how are you? Good, where are you guys from? Florida. Florida. Look around if you have any questions, let us know. Thank you. We should probably get the children uh, some souvenirs. They've got magnets. Ooh, we can buy spam. James would wear that for sure. I think seriously, they need a shirt from here. Neither of them have probably eaten Spam. Maybe James has. It's a Spam puzzle. Okay, this may or may not be all we bought, but it's kind of hard to go to the Spam Museum and not buy all the Spam things. So yeah, we got some souvenirs. Well, that was spamtacular. I think we might be part of the spamily now that we spam, I mean, spent so much money. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to uh, end it here. You tell them goodbye, babe. Goodbye, babe. Yo, wish me luck. I'm gonna cook some spam. But it looks gross. But the vegetables will make up for it. Eesh. I don't know, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna fry it up in this pan over here. Here goes nothing. Looking good so far.
Can't wait to try them. Okay, so it looks really good. My vegetables came out first, so we'll have to see what Jimbo's reaction is. What's Jimbo's reaction? It's not bad. Oh, no. 